Hello, I'm Milo, and welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, <laughs> I I have I always have plans for streams that get delayed, and this time the delay was because this bundle came out, the Queer Games Bundle 2022. Oh, it's a bit of a pun there, actually. Uh, but yeah, I think this is the second year that the Queer Games Bundle as an institution has existed. During Pride Month, they get a bunch of uh, queer indie developers together on Twitch. Uh, um, sorry, itch. They rhyme, so I got confused. It's itch. I'm on Twitch. This is on itch. Itch.io. Uh, hi, Kevin. How's it going? <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, so basically there's 413 creators, 588 items, 60 US dollars. Um, you can see the type of things that are in there. A lot of games, also physical, like pen and paper tabletop games. A few comics, I read those last night, they were pretty cute. Um, and Misk and other things, but it's mostly games. Whoa, that's my voice. It shouldn't be coming out of there. Okay. Um, yeah, they're going well. This is, yeah, this is up to date. Uh, still 29 days left to get this bundle. There's also a sliding scale pay what you want, pay what you can bundle if you can't afford the full $60. You can still get all the content. Uh, but if you can, they do uh, urge you to purchase the full one. Direct action you can take right now to support queer people in a life changing way and get 500 amazing, heartfelt, fun, and radical games. And that's what we're going to be exploring today. So. Uh, in the last couple of days since I got the bundle, I've been looking through everything that's there, picking out things that caught my interest. Um, there's quite a few things like point-and-click games, interactive fiction, visual novels, uh, dating sims, and horror games, and all those I'm not as interested in, so I've avoided those, but uh, even without those, there was plenty that interested me and of those that interested me I picked out 21 and I'm just going to go through them I couldn't pick an order so I'm going in alphabetical order <laughs> oh good oh given yeah well done I'm sure the creators will thank you for going to buy the bundle um yeah so why don't we crack into it this first one is a midnight stroll actually I regret because what's cool about this is these little preview images you can hover over them it will show you a little bit of the description and some of the screenshots that are on the page. Um, once you've loaded that up, you can't see it, but you can like go to the creators page um, and then get it there. So it's a short beat em up game by Frosty Chow. And yeah, most of these have standalone downloads, uh, which I've put together in a folder here that I did not have open foolishly. Um, a couple of them are browser only, so we'll just do those in the browser. And yeah, let's get started. So this is a midnight stroll. Dot XE. Okay, press enter. Oh, I should like read the description from the page as well. Play as Chelsea as she makes her way down the street to fill a late night urge. Fight strange creatures that block your path and collect various items that bring you joy. So. That's fun. A little bit of a mystery there. What is the urge? <laughs> but we'll find out. Another restless night. I think I want to dye my hair. Well, there you go. That's the urge. And I understand that urge perfectly. I need to re-dye mine, actually. The green's fading. I've got blonde streaks now, which is not as fun as having the big green look. All right. So we've got two attacks, the weak attack string combo, and then a strong one. Boom! Long charge up. Wait, I recognize this ambient music. Where's this from? Eh, I'll figure it out. Um, as you go along, you find items, so I've picked up the lipstick. Pretty! We're assaulted or threatened by these kind of shades of myself on the way. I'm trying to place that that kind of sound in the background. 
Let's see if you can pick it up. What? I picked the right window. How come it's not capturing the footage? Something's going wrong. All right, I'll try a game capture. Hold on, I have to pause this. Yeah, item screen pauses it. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, see if this works. Okay, that's working. Great. Sorry about that. Well, you didn't miss much. And we'll be backtracking over this part anyway, because we have to return at the end. I found a strawberry milk. Yeah, I thought I'd captured it. There, there might be a few technical issues today. It's unpredictable with these small self-published uh, indie games on PC. Anything can happen. <laughs> I've vetted that all the games themselves work, at least. Yeah, line up, that's right. Hoping there's a health rest restoration item. Oh, hand sanitizer, perfect. Very helpful. I wish my hair was as light as hers and you wouldn't need to bleach it before dying. Okay. Um, take bets on what color you think she's going to dye it. Opinions, please. You know what I think I recognized that sound effect from? That sort of ambient background noise. It reminded me of, I think it's Shadow Temple in Ocarina of Time. I've been watching a lot of Ocarina of Time randomizers recently. <laughs> They're a lot of fun. A lot of ones with silly settings. Entrance randomizers where doors will take you to a random part of the game. And uncoupled entrances where if you go back through the same door, you don't end up in the same place. You go to a different place. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Okay, the hair dye is here. Oh, Gibbon got her guess in as purple and she was absolutely right. The color is lilac to be specific, but purple is good enough. What else have we got so far? Box cutter. Ouch, it's sharp. Strawberry milk. A sweet drink for your tummy. Hand sanitizer. Makes your hands smell good. Some of them do. I really like uh, the smell of some of them, for sure. Wildflowers. Picked fresh from an uncut lawn. I don't know if we're going to fill up our whole inventory on the way back, but I can try. When I was testing this, I pretty much just ran past every enemy, and that worked. It doesn't lock the screen or anything, so you can just book it on down to the store and, and then head home but by engaging with the combat you get the item drops and then you can have a look at the little inventory description oh Ooh. okay <laughs> curious you feel more feminine already with the syringe oh okay is uh feel more feminine already is that because I'm, I'm, I'm now looking at the colors of her outfit? <laughs> um, when you get uh, hormone replacement therapy, is that delivered via syringe, the hormones? Hmm. I suppose in some cases it might be. Candy. Yeah, purple's a pretty cool color. Maybe I'll go purple next time. I've dyed my hair green a few times. I was thinking blue might be nice. You get a lot of blue hair in anime. Ow. I wonder if I could dye it silver or if it's not bleached enough. Bandages. Oh yeah, when you're charging a your strong attack, you can get interrupted out of it, and vice versa. 
Um, candy. You can never have too much. Bandages. Goes well with the box cutter. Oh. Yeah, if you do have an accident. I want to stick a band-aid on that. I say band-aid, of course, other brands are available. My preferred brand is Elastoplast. They stick well, and they don't leave too much residue. Although my mother is allergic to them. Fortunately, I am not. Book, perfect before bed. Can we read that cover? It's a bit too small. All right, we're home. In our award, nice little screen showing Chelsea with her purple hair. I missed two items, but oh well. And that's the end of the game. See? These these itch games, they can be short and sweet. And this one's very sweet. Not much enemy variety, but that's okay. And that's the end. Okay. So thank you, Frosty Chow. And up next is Duck Duck Swap by Steph, aka uh uh, what was it? Baked bread. <laughs> um, who is based in Australia? So that's cool. Uh, this is a game where you're a duck and you have to get bread, and there's ants. And yeah, there were two playable ducks. I was just trying to figure out how to swap between the ducks. I guess I have to find the other duck in the world because we're. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not playing the web version. I will be playing the standalone download for better performance whenever I can. But yes, welcome Baked Bread. It's great to see you and you've come just in time to watch your own game being played. I'll make sure to capture it. So it's great to have you here. Um, they're saying, yeah, sorry, the web version's laggy and that Midnight Stroll is very cute. Yeah, so here we are. First person. Uh, quack. I can't see the volume level. It looks a bit loud, maybe, uh, but the music's chill, so I'll leave it. Yeah, so we have 10 minutes in this little world of low poly goodness to roam around as a duck. I can't see myself. I wonder if there's a, like, yeah, I don't know. It's first person, but take it from me. I'm a duck. Hopefully we'll see another duck at some point, but maybe Baked Brad can tell me if there's a control to go third person <laughs> pick up to use on the crate okay we released the ant are you grateful ant there is some dialogue ow what not grateful it was a secret red ant so the red ants are the baddies they will try to eat the bread before you can get it um oh we found the other duck hello uh -huh. hmm. So the red ants try to eat your bread before you can wow. get it, and you have to get 10 bits of bread before the red ants consume it all. The green duck is better at jumping, but the white duck, who I am now, can open gates and locks with the keys. And yeah, you just explore, wow. move around, talk to the purple ants. Maybe I could just have a crumb. No, bread is all for me. I don't think you're actually supposed to feed bread to ducks, by the way. I think it's not healthy for them. I believe the recommendation is to get like a cabbage or something instead and shred bits of it off for them by hand. Just check the chat. Thank you so much. So cool to see someone playing. Yeah, so cool to have the creator here. That's so great. Um, okay, only first person available. The pause menu has, oh yeah, here we go, some instructions. Yeah, so that's everything I just said. <laughs> huh, no, I haven't seen that episode, Gibbon. Gibbon is talking about the episode of a, the Garfield cartoon, Where the Ants Who Steal Your Dinner song, which is now stuck in her head. Yeah, you really tricked me with that red ant in the cage there, Baked Brad. Rude. Who left all this bread laying around? That's a great question, actually. Can you tell me how to swap between the ducks? <laughs> I'd love to see the jumping capabilities of the red duck. Oh, pink key. Of course, pick up to open gate, okay. So probably that gate, yeah. But there is a red ant in there. If we let them out, they'll 
Oop. Would be a shame if some ant would eat all this bread. <laughs> well, I'll eat what I can, but I can't jump up to get the rest. Don't you think that's enough slices? Not quite enough. I'm almost there, though. <laughs> Okay, press X to swap. Well, I'll finish this run as white dock and then I'll perhaps do another one as green dock. Got that bread! I will play again. This is a very cute game. I like it a lot. Let's see, so I went that way last time. I wish I wasn't a gluten intolerant. Maybe I could just have a crumb. Oh, poor ant. <clears throat> um, I know Gibbon is not a fan of ants, but I am. Um, I hope these are okay. They're a bit cartoony, aren't they? Okay, hello. Swap. All right. So that was the duck that I was. And now I am the green duck. Love the duck model. It's very cute. Hello. Oh, yeah. That's a heftier jump. Let's go to this archway. Those red guys are scary. So there is a division of ants where the ants don't get on among themselves. Hello. Bread! Oh, if you get impacted, it actually takes one of your slices of bread, I see. So I don't, I don't know if the red ants are eating the, ant, the bread that's around in the world, but if they hit you, they'll steal some of your bread. Save me a slice. I know you're quite large for ants, but a whole slice is maybe too much. <laughs> These ants are fine with Gibbon. I haven't got to the part in Elden Ring with the ants yet that you told me about, but I have been playing it pretty consistently. Um, I've done all of Limgrave and most of Kaled. Just getting to the last castle in Kaled now. So I can't open that gate, but I wonder if I can jump over. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it says, I think you need someone to open it for you. I don't know if this was intended, but I jumped over the fence. Ugh. Oh no, can I not get out? Oh no, <laughs> the red hand. <laughs> and I need to be next to the other duck to swap. I've trapped myself in here with a red ant. This is the worst situation. <laughs> yeah, that's game over for the green duck. <laughs> Oops. silly of me <laughs> that's what you get for cheating says baked bread <laughs> it's true well I guess that's the end of the run I completed a run as white duck and I have ended in a fail state for green duck oh no okay fine take my bread oh I know I'll use the red ant to bounce up and out. <gasps> oh. oh, I can infinitely jump. I got into a state where I can infinitely jump, which means we can view this landmass from above, except we can't because it's phasing out. <laughs> How do you like me breaking your game, huh? <laughs> Amazing. I think I've hit the ceiling. Oh, no, we're still going up. <laughs> I can see my feet. I didn't notice that before. Oh. <gasps> I got above the huge invisible wall above the gate. I did it. I broke your game twice. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Well, now that we're out and enjoying our freedom, I guess I better grab the bread I can and finish a screen dock and enjoy that victory. I'm a big fan of bread, actually. Oh, another duck could probably lift this. And we have a little cubic pig. That's extremely cute. I know about lifting bins. We'll do that. Hey, duck. Quack, quack. Oh, gluten intolerant. Didn't notice that. You, you could use this to stand on. Okay, so where's that going to let us get to? Hmm. Maybe I could use it to get over the fence. <laughs> but no, that was a mistake last time. Maybe if we open the gate and then put it down in there and then stand on it and then jump up. Yeah. 
that that would be a way to get all that bread up there. But I don't think I need it to get to 10 with green duck, so I'll just... Ooh, tree bread. The best kind of bread. Oh, oh. Hmm. I gotta test this. Oh, okay. It respawned me back on my... Yeah, that's good. Back on land. <laughs> yes, Beeman Strats. Oh yeah, Gibbon is also gluten intolerant. She says she misses real bread. I'm sorry. I know that offerings are pretty dire for gluten-free. Uh, I've had some really good gluten-free pancakes, but I don't know how to make them. I could try and get you the recipe. You spin me right around, baby, right around. Like a rubbish bin, baby. Hmm. Have I exhausted the bread supplies around here? There's one. Ta-da! All right. Well, that was awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much for that game. Um, and including it in the bundle. Very cool. <laughs> this was, oh, a submission to Newbies Game Jam 2022. It's Baked Bread's second game jam. The theme was minimal art, minimalism with optional challenges uh, alone. You are the enemy and everything is dangerous. And they made everything from scratch. Entirely self-taught. Very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, gluten-free alternatives. Gibbon says there's a decent amount. A lot of them are even tasty but they still don't really approximate wheat bread well. Yeah, fair enough. All right, well, great game, Steph, uh, Baked Bread. Had a lot of fun with that one. So let's go to the next one. Next one is Elephantasy. Elephantasy. Uh, last time I checked this, it was included in some other bundles as well that I already owned, uh, but I own it again now. This is by Linker. Um, uh, ben Maxim, the capsule summary. Can you collect all the gems, reach the tower in the clo clouds, and return home? This is described as a exploratory puzzle platforming game with 350 rooms <laughs> and four bosses, three of which are optional. So we might not get through the whole thing today. Uh, but that's this stream. The short ones I'll play through, the longer ones I'll play a bit until I've had enough. Yeah, 350. <laughs> They're all quite small though, so you'll see. Um, oh, lots of good options. Uh, a new game. Okay. So let's see, place a tiny elephant trying to get back to their home. Collect gems, etc., etc. Okay. Well, does this have controller support? No. And I haven't bothered to map any controls over. <clears throat> Very cute, eh? Tiny elephant. Love it. Hit W to continue reading. Okay. And as you can see, it's just a flip screen, single screen platformer type thing. <laughs> uh, the little elephant sound is very cute. Um... Oh, we're going into the miniverse. Huh. Cute. Oh, poor elephant. Oh, somebody is help them Ooh, some background music is fading in I wonder if you can hear that it's very soft I've just noticed that every screen has its own little name up the top here rest stop this is item shop that's a very kind of spectrum style platformer type of thing to do 
you know, Jet Set Wally and that. They all had individually named rooms. We've seen that before. Oh, hello. Ah, hello there. You slept well, I hope. I am Snorri the Wizard. This is my item shop. I found you outside, hmm? You fell from the sky, hmm? How to get home? An interesting query. I've heard of a tower in the clouds above us. If such a thing exists, it may help you get home. However, to reach it would require my items. I may have a proposal for you, my friend. And in this world, there are many magic gems. Collect some for me and I'll loan you items. We'll start small. Find me one gem, hmm? Then you may borrow one of my items. So this is a platformer without a jump button. Oh, okay. You can only hold so many items. This is another kind of spectrum thing to do. More the isometric platformer thing. You pick up an item and carry it around and then leave it somewhere. Swap them out. We saw that in um, Monster Max, which of course was a throwback to that kind of thing. Night Lord probably had those mechanics, I don't remember. I've never played it to any significant degree. Okay. So there's some pretty handy items, but we can't use any of them yet, because we don't have a gem. Oh, here's a gem. Okay, <laughs> let's go back. Ring ring, hello. The hell, the hint line. Old man or rigger. All right, let's actually read this this time. Stays let you grow vines. The ring lets you lift objects. Boots allow you to run fast, and a snorkel lets you dive. Okay, but I can only... Oop. I want the boots. Uh, hang on. Once picked up, items can fall back with S. Uh, what? Ah. Uh, I was standing there before. <laughs> there we go. Maybe I have committed to the ring. <laughs> yeah, I can borrow one item, pick any that you like. It said I could drop one. Maybe I'll try dropping it. Oh, back where it was, probably. I just wanted to run, that's all. Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, so now I hold shift. Whoa! <laughs> Baked bread remarked on the steppy noises, but <laughs> when you're running, there's, there's a lot more of them. Greenhouse, item shop. Aha, okay. Nice, lovely hints to tell you which item is useful in which zone. So going to the greenhouse, obviously, the seed is going to be useful. Water zone, snorkel is going to be useful. So let's go right this time. <laughs> this is extremely cute. Oh, we also got background music over here, so... Oh, it only plays... Oh, it only plays near the radio, and it kind of fades in and out. That's very cute. Yeah, I don't know if you can even hear that. I'll turn it up. Very loud bird. <laughs> ah! Stupid bird, you're messing up my sound levels. Okay, I'll turn back down. Okay. East to factory, west to item shop. Watch your step on the bridge ahead. Aha! This is why the boots are useful. Get to skim over those gaps, yeah. Oh, but I can't get through there. <laughs> wonder what happens if we fall down here. Ooh, a handy map. Oh, that's a cute map. The low pixels. Oh, and the 3D world map. I'm not sure what tool they use to make this game, but it's extremely cool. It looks almost like Pico 8-esque. Maybe higher res, I'm not sure. Um, okay. What happens now? Okay. Can't use my boots in the water, clearly, but... Yeah. So I can cross the bridge gap, but I can't do anything in there. 
Oh, that's handy. I'll take that. Red girders, love that. Oh, well, I made my choice and it was wrong. Oh, hello. This is our factory. Feel free to look around to go back upstairs. You climb up east of here, or if you fall further, climb up the reservoir. Well, that takes ages. Let's go east. Hey, buddy. These treadmills are the best. You just run on top of them to move platforms. Hold shift to dash. Give it a shot. Uh. Oh, right. This is the conveyor, and that moves that platform. Got it. Oh, got to speed over. Okay. And now I know where the next key is. Just need to find where to use it. I don't know what we make here. Factories make stuff. So what about this one? Maybe we make more factories or something. <laughs> I love this tiny elephant. I don't appear to have any arms. Okay. So with the ring, we'd be able to lift that pot and move it over there. Okay, and the key gets us that gem. Oh, hello. Oh, a fellow adventurer. Huzzah! I am Festa, treasure hunter extraordinaire. Along with my sister, I scour the land for gems. A few too desire gems. Heed my words now. Below us is a room with a single pot inside. Though vines nearby wilt, new life can thrive. Do you understand? Gift new life to that pot. Something special may grow when planted. <laughs> Gibbons enjoying the elephant noises. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Big bread is too. Could listen to the whoop 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 on repeat for 10 hours, to be honest. <laughs> uh, great. Oh, is this the entrance? No. So this is where that guy wanted me to drop a seat. That beetle friend. I wonder how big the elephant is in the outside world if I'm smaller in the miniverse. I did get shrunk when going into it. Ugh, maybe I gotta drop it off here. Let's do it. Woo! All right, back to the start. But I know how to get one gem. I don't know, I need six gems to be able to bring two items here which would let me bring boots to get in and then seed to uh, do whatever was happening in that other room. Um, but I can get that other one for now, right now. What's the time? Oh, yeah, maybe after getting that gem, we'll move on. This is obviously a large scale game with a lot going on in it. But yeah, I'm very charmed by this. It's fun exploring around too. The map obviously helps a lot. Let's check that out. Okay. Yeah, that's very handy. Yeah, but I won't be playing this for 10 hours. It might take 10 hours to clear it. I don't know how many games I'll be able to get through today. But whatever I don't finish... Oh, this is just next to this room. Okay, so I could have done that earlier. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I might do extra streams if it comes to it. Um, yeah, so I might finish up with this one there. That was Elephantasy, or the bare beginnings of it, first impressions, you might say. I don't know if the game auto saves or anything. We have an option to go to title.
Okay, so the same thing I got the second gem. And then it just puts you back in the rest stop. Nice. I never went that way, which just leads there. Okay. Very cool little game. Alright, so that's Linker's Elephantasy. What's up next in our alphabetical list here? <laughs> Ooh, Hook Cat. This is cool. So, on the last time I did a stream like this, which was in March on Trans Day of Divisibility, I looked at games from last year's bundle, and that included Inbox uh, from Indie Gesindel, a German collective indie developers. And today I'm playing another of their games, Hook Cat. So Indie's Gesindel is, Indie Gesindel is also used as a pseudonym by Laura Hyman, the programmer. Also involved were Bloob's Top Cat, <laughs> Sarah Norin and Zoe Hickman, as well as a mysterious cat in a trench coat. And this is a grappling hook type game, which is always fun. Big fan of that genre. So, Hook Cat. Oh, might have to do a game capture for this one. See if that's working. That looks right. Wait, was it like that before? When I was playing the duck game, was it not zoomed in? No, Midnight Stroll was when I game captured. I'm gonna like go back in my own stream. How do I do that? <laughs> uh, how do you like watch your own VOD in real time? Is that a thing you can do? Oh, and I didn't change the game name that I'm playing. Oh well. I neglected the Twitch dashboard. Uh, I don't think I can do that. Oh well. Uh, apologies to Frosty Chow if I misrepresented your game by not capturing the window properly. Ugh. Hopefully you got a good impression of it anyway. Viewers. And now... <sighs> Sorry, had to take off my jumper. It was too warm. Right, what are the controls? Yep, 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 good, good, good. Oh, I can use a control, I will do that. Rest my wrist, it needs it. All right. Okay, aiming the hook is a bit easier with the mouse as I learned in testing. I haven't tried the controller yet. So it's like a fully 3D modeled game but viewed from top down. Oh. Oh, okay. The game actions are like feeding into the soundscape. Whenever I do a grapple hook, there's like the little jazzy sting. That's a very, very cool, very cute. Um, so I've played the first few levels of this already, so I know the gist. Using the grapple hook, we can also move boxes around and the objective is just to get all the fish in a level and then get to the exit once the once you get the fish. How's that? The, I'm going to turn up the game volume. Okay. Tell me if that's too loud. So when I looked at the screenshots, I was just sort of doing a cursory inspection. And I thought this game might be a side-scroller, but it's actually top-down with the hook being used to move you horizontally the same way hookshot type uh, items do in Zelda, the 2D Zeldas. Yeah, I'm actually going to use mouse and keyboard because then you can aim the hook a bit better. You can directly point to where you want to go with the cursor. Um, so like this, and then like this. Cool. Hmm. Yeah, Gibbon was just commenting on that. Don't often see top-down grapple games outside of Zelda likes. Zelda clones, she said. Ah. So 
need to move that to get this. But I also need to weigh down the switch to open the door. When the hook attaches, it becomes a rigid pole, which lets you move boxes around quite freely. Like so. Oh. So these are going to get more puzzly as we go on, I think. I didn't watch the Blossom Tales 2 trailer, but we were talking about it earlier. It's the first Blossom Tales... I don't remember who published it, but the second one is being done through Platonic's new publishing arm. So... Being part of the rare fan community, we're keeping an eye on Platonic stuff. And yeah, I didn't watch the Blossom 2 trailer, but I am aware of it. Was it Blossom Tales? Yeah. So are you interested in that one, Gibbon? Because I'm... I am interested in checking it out. I bought the first one a while ago, but I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Story of my life. That's why I like doing streams with a bunch of these indie games. It gives me an excuse to, to actually play them a bit. Because in my regular gaming time, it's just more difficult to make time for things. I tend to fixate on things. Oh, we need all the boxes here. Okay. This will be easier if I go below. There's a bit more space down here. Um, yeah, I'll put it here. Kim says she's mildly interested in Blossom Tales too. Oh, I hope that works. <laughs> uh, should, should probably play it. Of course, the Zelda like she's most waiting on is Hazelnut Bastille. I've heard of that. Don't know too much about it. Oh, that's the end. Okay, cool. I didn't know how much there would be, but there you go. Transcendent Games, I guess, is the label there under here. Um, the game itself is published on the Indie Gazindle itch page, but yeah, that's cool. I think I've heard of Transcendent Games. I should look that up. It's actually difficult to search for. I tried it before. Um, because it's just an adjective and that people say that a lot of games are transcendent and they throw that word around a lot. Um, I was going to mention the New Yacht Club game, their first game since Shovel Knight. What's that one called again? I kickstarted it. I don't remember the name. It's, it's a Zelda-like Game Boy Color-ish type thing. Okay, that was Hook, Hook Cat. Very cool. Very cute. I enjoyed the iteration on the mechanics and such and how the sound effects were built in around your actions. That was cute. Very jazzy. Okay. So next in my alphabetical list. is I the Living Flame, and speaking of Game Boy style games, this is actually a Game Boy ROM that you can play, yeah, in an emulator or such, like, but for some reason I decided to download the XE installer, um, so I'm not going to have emulator features, that's okay. Uh, this was previously included in a Domino Club multi-pack thing, I, what is this? Oh my gosh. My my eyes cannot focus on this. Um, but yeah, this, this version, standalone, published on Modern Modron's page, apart from the Domino Club page, includes nine bonus levels. Uh, what else do we know about it? 
that was a summary. Okay, so modern Modron, aka Rose. No summary. <laughs> I'm sure there was one um, on this page. I can do this. Whoa, caps lock. Yeah, no, no summary. So this game's a bit of a mystery for us right now, but we've got this sort of ancient style iconography. Made with GB Studio, let's launch it. I, the living flame. This one. Okay. I don't know about this installer. Does it support controllers? Yes, great, okay. Um, quick look at the credits. Whoa, nice digitized photo of a horse statue, perhaps. A game by MC Ellum. Words by Snash, sound by Colt Cruncher. Puzzle design based on mazes. Featured in Mad Mazes by Robert Abbott. Made for Domino Club. Kill the boss in your mind. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. Let's start. Oh, okay. We got like a Makai Oh, we can choose which, which starting point, I guess. Not sure what that's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. This is cute. Very Game Boy Color style. You know, Pokemon-ish, Zelda-ish sprites. Well, we've got tile-based grid movement, though. For every move you make, the Minotaur will move twice. Okay. The Minotaur will first try to get closer to you by moving horizontally. If the Minotaur cannot get closer to you by moving horizontally, it will try to move vertically. Okay, so it's explaining the rules of, like, a puzzle. It starts with a wish and a step. Hmm, fascinating. Ooh, Gibbon's telling me about a Hazelnut Bastille. It's like, if you, what if you did a remake, a demake of Breath of the Wild in the style of Link to the Past? Very SNES looking, got some SNES era composers to do tracks, crafting and food systems, and some interesting twists on the Link to the Past style weapon equipment systems. Looks gorgeous. Oh gosh, with that endorsement, I must check out this YouTube link you've dropped. Oh wow, that's so cute. Oh, I like this character. What place does such selfless resolve Wow, voice acting. From? Hold on a sec. <laughs> this reminds me of the UI of Crypt of the Necrodancer. Yeah, that looks cute. Um, yeah, I'll check that out. Anyway, back to this. Oh, Given Capes. They're also making a GBC style accompanying game called Dawnthorn. Oh, that's so cute. I like that a lot. All right, everybody check out Hazelnut, Bastille, and Dawnthorn. <laughs> but for now, check out I, the Living Flame. Well, we're about to battle a Minotaur, I think. Oh, there it is. Oops, okay. Looks like it moves twice for every one move you do. You died. Okay, so this is Dark Souls. All right, so if it moves there, it moves horizontally first, so I can actually trap it here. There we go. It's turn-based movement. If I run faster, I will get farther than everyone. Hmm. Well, now what do I do? Can I exit this screen? No. It's very dangerous to get around that. It's kind of trapped. If I move to the left, it's going to catch me. What else can I do? Well, maybe that script was my reward? Yeah, okay. So now I can go here. Oh, more Minotaur action. Okay. So I'm going to want to trap it. I can do this. And then this. Excellent. It will all be worth it one day. Has a volume. Looks okay. Um, hmm, can I walk over this? Yes. Oops, now I'm stuck. Aha, I can do this. Trapped you. Uh-oh. Right, it goes horizontal, then vertical. Faster, push, hustle, harder. Never stop. But I should, yeah, 
just jump into those stairs. So the stairs are your goal, I guess, and the, the page is the secondary goal. But I might as well try for it. We can trap it in the stairs there and go grab this. And then try and trap it up there. What happens now? Can't stop, won't sleep. This is how I win. Yeah, okay, trapped. Five of nine. Okay, so this is a short game too. I should be able to get through this. As long as I can keep up with the puzzles. Oh. Okay. So it always has the two moves. Hmm. Let's get further down and then across. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Grind my bones to make my bread. I like the style of this. It's very cool. Of course, it's all made in GB Studio. It looks very authentic to a Game Boy game. Not sure about these inter inter interstitial scenes. They're a bit indistinct. All right. Yeah, given a grace, they're very abstract. Yeah. They promised ascension and glory. Okay, so we're gonna wanna trap Minotaur down here. All right, so it kind of gets pushed along. Oops. Uh-oh, you died. So, let's see. Hmm, I don't like this. Because if I do this... Yes, okay, we made it. Could be a, a depiction of the Minotaur, perhaps. But yeah, a bit abstract, like you say. Okay, that was a mistake. Oh yeah, they got me. Nope. <laughs> the exclamation mark bubble overwrote part of the page icon there. I'm not sure what embedded emulator they're using here. Yeah. Okay, what's this about then? If you try and get it trapped in there on the right. By the time I get low enough. Yeah. It can catch me. Hmm. I could go over here first, then I'll be further away. Or I could just do this. Oh, it's so quick. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, I know. What? Why did it get me there? Hmm. I can trap it in here. Yeah, there we go. And then when I go around here, it'll get trapped in that other one. The Minotaur's a bit stupid, that's the thing. Yeah. You dummy. Sweat is currency, so is blood. Oof. Hmm, <clears throat> not long to go now. Hmm. 
<laughs> no. I was thinking we probably want to get it stuck in the left alcove. <laughs> well, thanks for that, Baked Bread. You're saying my stream is very soothing? It's very kind. Yeah, I try to be very chill in my streams. I think it's a good thing to do. A lot of streamers are quite high energy, but that's just not me. And I can't sustain that either. I can barely sustain this level of energy for more than a few hours. Hello, buddy. What are we going to do with you? Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm boned right now. Yeah. This one's tricky. Oof. Oofy doofy. What I need is for it to come over here. No, it's always gonna, yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe I just want it to come down. Oh yeah, it goes two spaces for my one. Very fast Minotaur. Okay, so it needs to come into this alcove first, basically. And then I can make some headway. And then try and trap it down here, perhaps. So if I go under here, and then this way. Ugh, well now what? Now I'm stuck. Hmm. Alright, well let's do it this way. You go in there. Now you come in here. Okay, now where do I want to be? Probably as far away as I can. Try and... get it down here. Now this, it just goes over twice. Oh, okay, yeah, because it goes horizontal first. Okay, that gives us some space. One, two, and then... Now what? Now it's going to be a race, and I can't win that race. Because it'll... Hmm. Should have trapped it in the right cubby. Go! Go, go, go! <laughs> no. Alright, what are you suggesting, Gibbon? do last time. I've forgotten. Did a weird movement there. I wonder if that's something I can exploit. Just checking the game page now. Yeah, doesn't say much. Okay, what did I do last time? Hmm. Okay. 
That's what I did. Now I might be able to do this. Ha ha. That's it. Tears a weakness, leaving my body. <laughs> heard that pain is weakness leaving the body. I've heard that. That's a silly thing. Um, hmm. Okay, now it's there. I probably can't make it all the way, can I? Okay. Do that again. Woof! Tense. Alright, this is the last level, I think. Woof hoo hoo, I will attain. I have a, a descended. Hmm. No more pages to worry about. Now it's just the Minotaur and me. Here we go. There's more levels. Not too many more, judging by the map screen. I am the chase, and the chase is me. Dr. Chase Meridian. I don't remember that song. Um, hmm. I probably should have had more space between us. Space between us. Hmm. I need to get it over here when I'm not there. How? Um, hmm. I can do this. No. I can do this. Hmm. It's a bit of a sticky wicket. Yes, I know I died. This must be the last level. Hmm. <sighs> this is no good. do this. Oh, that didn't work. <clears throat> Trying to get lodged down here. And then over here. Is that going to help? That's not enough space. It just moves back. I guess that's a sort of a red herring. Now that's there, yeah. You, you really want to avoid getting it in there. I might be able to use that space later, but by the time I'm there, if the Minotaur hasn't caught up to me, then I've already won, so... It's just a space to avoid trapping the Minotaur in, I think. But it'll follow you if you move straight down over there. Um, hmm... No. Ah, this is tough. It's the right level of puzzle that the like possibilities are limited. I appreciate that. That's going to trap it up there again. We can go down here, get some space. What I want to do is lure it into that bottom corner, I think. 
So here, if I do this, and then this, and then this, then it's trapped there for a bit. How much space does that get me? The only way I can move it out of there is doing this. Then this, okay. And then this, ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. <laughs> that was a little scary there for a second. Okay. A wish into a promise, into a struggle to attain. Those who push and bleed and grind will be rewarded. Oh, great. Things are getting more abstract. Wait. Minotaur's moving differently now. You okay, buddy? And if the reward has not come... Then work harder. Always two steps ahead, always too slow, always too late. The game is not rigged. So it's changed. The hunter has become the hunted, it seems. And if I expire before I make it, if my sweat dries and bones crumble and still nothing to show. Oof. Whoa, that's the end. Oh gosh, what does it mean? Hmm. Very poetic.